The live selling trend is raging now more than ever. Will Etsy soon offer the ability to live sell to your followers? All that and more in this episode of Seller News. Let's go. Everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to the Handmade and Beyond podcast. I'm your host, LL, uh, and I'm back with another edition of Seller News with some of the most uh, recent news, information, topics, things that you guys should know about if you are selling on Etsy or online in general. Uh, that's what I like to cover in these Friday Seller News episodes. So this episode, I got a couple of main topics that I want to dive into Live selling is the main thing I'm going to dive into later in this episode, but first I'm going to talk about uh, some other pertinent things going on with Etsy uh, this week so you guys uh, have an idea and can stay informed. Uh, the first one is you may or may not have received a threatening email from Etsy about selling cashmere stuff. So Etsy sent out what seems like it may have been a, a blanket email when it wasn't supposed to be. Uh, to a bunch of sellers threatening them. It's from Etsy Safety and Trust Department basically saying one or more of your listings may violate uh, our policies of misrepresenting an item. Uh, basically saying that you may have something listed that says cashmere, but it's not actually cashmere. Um, you can't do that on Etsy. You can't say that something is what it's not and use keywords uh, to draw in traffic for stuff that is not actually the item. So, uh, and this kind of this kind of is the, the reason I think they took such a firm stance on this is because they were just sued by uh, the cashmere company, uh, which was uh, it was cashmere and I think it's pronounced Camel Hair Manufacturers Institute. Uh, I guess they have the rights to cashmere, so they sued uh, Etsy. They sued Amazon for sellers, I guess, misrepresenting their stuff, saying that it was cashmere and that it wasn't. Obviously, they don't want people selling stuff that's not cashmere, claiming that it is cashmere because it muddies their brand. Uh, they don't want stuff, you know, it could be counterfeit and it could just not be what they say it is. So they don't want people doing that. So they sued um, and settled with Etsy and uh, Amazon. I'm not sure how much. I'm sure it was a pretty penny. So Etsy sent this out. Uh, I think it was this week, people were getting this letter, they're freaking out, basically saying, I'm not doing this, I don't have cashmere, I'm not saying that I have cashmere. Usually when one of your listings gets flagged, so to speak, they will automatically deactivate it, and they'll send you this email. So I'm not sure if they actually deactivated any listings. Um, so if you got this letter or this email, and none of your listings were deactivated, you're probably pretty good. Uh, they usually don't leave the listings up. They usually will de deactivate them if they, one of them infringes on one of their policies or it's flagged for trademark infringement. Someone turns uh, one of the listings in, they will automatically deactivate it. And you can go to your deactivate the listings tab in Etsy and see that it was deactivated and see that there's usually a red notice on the top of it. And the main thing that you cannot do is don't just reactivate that listing. All right, you got it. that will get your shop shut down. So if it's something that was deactivated by mistake, you have to work with Etsy to resolve that. Don't just be like, oh, that was a mistake. Reactivate your listing. That will automatically flag Etsy and they're gonna see that you're intentionally relisting stuff that they flagged uh, as infringing on one of their policies. And that will uh, be grounds for usually a shop suspension or a permanent ban. And that's what you don't wanna do. So you gotta work with them. Uh, but if none of your stuff was deactivated, you're probably good to go. Um, just, uh, just ignore it. Uh, and, uh, oh my God, there's a fly in here. I've been trying to kill this fly and I knew this was going to happen. I was going to hit record and this fly was going to land on my face. It's very annoying. Anyways, so moving on to the next thing, if you didn't get the cashmere stuff and you're good to go, nothing to worry about. And it seems like a lot of people that did get it are good to go anyways. The next thing I want to talk about is Etsy just set up an investment fund for $30 million dollars. Um, to basically reinvest in a couple of things that are important to them. So they basically said they're investing in projects that will expand its efforts to foster economic empowerment and promote sustainability. Ba uh, basically, Chelsea Morzen, Etsy Senior Director of Impact and Sustainability, said 
Etsy's investments through this fund align with our impact goals to help accelerate the development of the creative economy, support financially underserved communities, and promote environmental sustainability. So all good stuff, it seems, that they're going to use this fund for. So I'm happy to see that they're investing back in these things. Uh, I know these things are important to a lot of people. I'm not sure. It's still a little vague. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to be doing, uh, but I'm sure there's going to be more to come on that specifically. Uh, but anything that they can do to help underserved communities, uh, environmental sustainability, um, and also help the creative economy with resources, whatever they're willing to do there, I think is always a good thing um, that they're reinvesting their money and the money's not just going to shareholders and executives. So $30 million is nothing to shake a stick at. It's a pretty good uh, chunk of chains. And I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing them continue to do this um, because Etsy is making a lot of money. They are a big player in the uh, e-commerce space now. So they are are not, uh, do not have a short of cash on hand. That is for sure. The last topic that I want to dive into, and this is the one that I started with, is live selling. And the reason why this is coming up again, and I've talked about this before, is the fact that Poshmark just announced or just released their live selling feature to everyone. They, this is something they've been testing. I know some of you guys may sell on Poshmark too, um, but they just released this live selling feature. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's for everyone or just for fashion um, and clothing and apparel. It seems like it may, may be. I'll have to check more into that because they didn't say anything about the other niches on there. Because you can sell, you can sell electronics on there now. You can sell handmade goods on there now. Uh, Poshmark has really uh, kind of evolved to be more than just a, a fashion ch sales channel. So basically, they launched their live shows and what they're calling them Posh shows. And what I thought was really interesting about the way that they're doing it, and if you're familiar, whatnot really kind of started this trend. This is a live auction website. You can sell whatever on there. You just auction stuff off. People buy it. Uh, and some people are doing really, really good on that website. Uh, so they're, it's created a new craze and a lot of these big platforms are following suit with different live selling features. But Fosh, uh, Poshmark um, is offering the unique ability to sell together. So you can do your own auctions or you can sell together, enabling hosts to auction items from other people's closets and curate their own shows with fresh inventory while helping others make sales. Uh, I'm not sure how exactly they're doing that, how that's going to be facilitated, but, it, and that's the problem, you know, with, with whatnot and these auction sites, you got to build a following. You got to, um, you got to start your shows, probably not selling a lot of anything or not having many people show up and you create uh, a following of people that will continually come. And then, then, then you'll start selling more and more and more. So the trouble with this is, you know, how do you have an audience to sell to? How do you create that audience? So if you have some big players in the market helping out the little guys um, and selling some of their stuff to help them create a following, I think that's a good thing um, that they are enabling sellers to do that. So it's it's very intriguing. I think that's a cool feature. It'll be interesting to see kind of how this evolves over time. And again, will Etsy adopt something like this? I, th I feel like they almost have to. I feel like you're going to get left behind if you don't offer some type of live selling functionality. But how you do it, how you facilitate it is really going to be key uh, to see how beneficial this is to sellers. And Etsy is a different animal. It's a different uh, niche of people, especially the handmade sellers. A lot of vintage, you know, vintage, I think it'd be all right. Um, there's a lot of vintage sellers on, you know, whatnot and those auction site all sites already but handmade is a little bit different because you're making your own stuff um you know you got to make a decent amount of profit on it otherwise it's not worth it so i think you know some of the pros of this if it does come to etsy are you know you can capitalize on this new trend take advantage of that and hopefully get a lot of traffic because of it um it's another way to engage um your your buyers and people that follow your shop or that are have bought from you before they can actually see you in person selling your stuff um and it's brings the the possibility for you know more revenue if you do really well or if it works really well uh, some of the cons i see are you know this auction style could create um the expectation for lower prices you know because a lot of people that sell on whatnot whatnot in these these uh, places they start with like dollar auctions two dollar auctions um and sell stuff. 
And I know a lot of handmade sellers, that is way, way too low. That's too low for me. It's probably too low for you. So if you're not basically doing bottom of the barrel prices, will people still come? Will people still buy that way? Maybe, and especially if they're routine Etsy buyers, which there's a lot of, you know, maybe that won't matter to them. Or maybe it's just a way for you to discount prices somewhat, like sale items, overstock items, do some clearance items. Um, or maybe you can sell stuff full price. I'm not sure. Uh, so there's a lot of th things that you can probably do. There's a lot of questions there. Um, you know, the other question is, how do you generate an audience? How do you get people to come to your auctions? Can you target your followers on Etsy? You know, you can, uh, if you go to your Etsy shop, you see how many people follow your, your shop. So can you target those people? Um, you know, can you let past customers know that you're going to have an auction because you can't market to them now. So I don't know if they'll roll out a different feature that you can let them know what's going on. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously the tech issues, you know, how, however they roll this out, there's usually always glitches. There's usually always tech issues. Um, you know, a lot of handmade sellers aren't as tech savvy. Uh, so they have to make it user friendly. They have to make it easy to facilitate, easy to do. Uh, and then the other thing is maybe you don't want to do live selling. You know, getting in front of a camera live is not fun for a lot of people, you know, <laughs> especially if you don't, if you've never done it or you just have stage fright. Uh, you know, I, I get it. You know, I still get nervous when I get in front of the camera, uh, especially live. I mean, you're, you make mistakes, you fumble your, over your words. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with technology and, and doing the live stuff. So, um, those are kind of the pros and cons that I see. And I think this is, you know, this is going to be an ongoing conversation when it comes, comes to this live selling, because it is so big now, um, uh, and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So soon enough, uh, I think you're going to see a lot of these other uh, companies to at least adopt some type of live selling format. And I expect it to come very soon from Etsy. And this may be something that they roll out on their app. They did say in their, their basically for this year. I did an episode on this uh, a week or two ago about their expectations for this year. They are going to update their app, continue to add new features. Maybe this is a new feature that they roll out in their app, the ability to live sell um, as an extension of maybe the explore feature. Who knows? We will wait and see. And as soon as I hear something from you, from them, uh, I will, of course, let you guys know. But they haven't announced anything. Um, I don't want you to think that they're, this is coming because we don't know yet, this is pure speculative, but I would imagine they're reading the uh, writing on the wall and they probably think, hey, we should probably do something because at the end of the day, they're a major company and they're missing some revenue. They're missing a huge chunk of revenue because they don't have this ability. A lot of people are like buying this way. So if they don't have that ability for people to buy this way, those people are gonna go buy all their places. They're gonna go to whatnot. They're gonna go to Poshmark. Um, so we'll wait and see. But those are the things that I wanted to cover today. The live selling, uh, the $30 million investment that Etsy is making back in the community, uh, and the, the cashmere debacle. So those are the three things that I wanted to cover. Uh, that is it for today's episode. If you guys like these episodes, please give me a comment, like, share, follow, uh, leave a review. If you're watching this on the uh, on YouTube or listening to it on the podcast, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. I read every review. I really appreciate them. It keeps me motivated to keep going when I get reviews, good or bad. You know, I usually get good ones, but every once in a while, someone will sneak in a bad one. I'm not perfect. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Just let me know. I appreciate the feedback because it helps me stay, uh, like I said, stay motivated and keep going and keep bringing the, uh, the good stuff to you guys. Um, and uh, with these episodes. So I'll be back uh, really soon with another episode for you guys. Have an amazing rest of your day. And we Thank you.